Good to go. All right, welcome everyone on the webinar. So we have people from uh, the companies we work with. We've got from military units. We've got um, our social audience. Uh, the really cool thing about this um, live is that we'll be able to record it <clears throat> and uh, share it later on too to everyone that's on our platform um, and then also have for a form of a blog. So if anyone's missed it, they'll be able to have access later on. Uh, so welcome everyone that's on. What I want to do um, right now is introduce Sophie formally. So I want everyone to know how I met her. Uh, it's been, I actually we've known each other for quite some time, which has been really awesome. So I think about six or seven years ago, I started training at Mosaic Yoga, which is now Resilience. And um, I really dug that yoga studio because it was run by a Marine and uh, Ryan Krupa and his colleague Ryan Glidden. And, uh, but, but Sophie actually manages the whole operation. And um, when I took her classes and got to know her, I just was like, this is the kind of woman I want to be friends with. Um, just very down to earth, very open to learning about other ways of thinking and movement just not just yoga and for me too like not just being a PT but learning about other ways of moving and way to, ways to use yoga as part of therapy for people coming in because people came into our clinic who do yoga and love it and have been told to not do it or are scared to do it so to be able to help them get back to doing um, yoga which is what they love like that's what we do we don't tell someone no we tell them we show them how and Sophie has the same mentality too in her practice um, and is actually, we work together too. She's helped me with my practice. I've helped her with her body, um, but just an amazing soul. Very always in, whenever I have conversations with her, she's always curious about life and learning and going into places that scare her, which is really hard for people. And especially right now when we have a little, I wouldn't say I have more time on my hands, but there's more idle time. Um, you know, going into the places that scare me to think about uh, is, is coming up more and more. And so being able to have, I think, a practice like that we can do in the morning, for example, um, to just like this physiological base, it's like anatomy base that you just do it, soothes the mind, soothes the body, um, is super effective and has been effective for me, especially in time, triggering time. So, Without further ado, I'd like, Sophie, I mean, if you can just introduce yourself, too, and, like, why you love yoga and all the other things you like to do and who you are, um, I would love that. Okay. Well, thank you for that super gracious introduction. Um, a lot of what you said, I feel the same way about you. Um, so, yeah, I've been teaching here in San Diego for about a decade, which I can't even believe. And I, I yeah, I believe that... Um, like life is an opportunity to learn. Like if you can utilize this experience as an opportunity to like um, develop mastery, then you, you kind of look at life through this lens of, you know, there is something to learn in every experience. And um, with movement, all of these experiences and all these ways to develop mastery in life, it happens through this, this, this little instrument. So I have learned so much with you as a PT that has certainly informed how I um, teach and lead yoga. And, um, and I just, I really believe in this practice and it's transformative, um, the, the transformative tools to help us develop, I call it the inner software, you know, so that we have, you know, we need both, we need a practice. I always say that as human beings, we need a practice, something we can do that builds rhythm in our lives, that builds strength and cultivates peace. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, you know, maybe it's, it's, it, I know for a long time I was an athlete. I grew up doing competitive, competitive swimming for 17, 18 years. And so it was just like, go hard, go fast, like break your body down and that's it. And if it's not hard and it's not breaking you down, then you're not living, you know? And so yoga kind of brought in this, oh, here's this other way of exploring, um, 
this dialogue with this body, you know? And so I, I love that it holds both. It has the capacity to give us um, a deeper connection to our physical form. And the hope is that we create sustainability. So we move well and we feel good as we continue to move through this experience. Yeah, I love that, Sophie. And that's something that, um, well, I don't do yoga regularly right now, like just adding mobility into my day and a routine, like what mobility yoga, parasympathetic practices like that. Parasympathetic meaning like the rest digest practices to add kind of the yin and yang of sort of going hard all the time, which is what I'm used to and have liked um, being able to add that other element of slowing down and pay attention to your body a little bit more, have a little bit more grace. It does teach, it has taught me a lot. Yeah. So whether it's yoga or mobility, it's been just the same, one in the same, really. One in the same, really. And that's what this morning's practice is going to be about. It is, it is, it's yogic, you know, there's, there's yeah. a foundation, but it, it is really going to be more sort of a little bit more mobility focused and vice versa. Like you taught me, you know, I came to you because I had an injury that I sustained from pretty much my yoga practice, trying to develop more upper body strength. And in yoga, you know, we don't really have that pull strength. And so you taught me the importance of um, working with you, the importance of having um, strength and healthy degree of tension in the body. So uh, working with you really transformed um, what like sustained wellness and feeling good really, um, really looks like in terms of, you know, it's an active practice. It's something we have yeah. to do. Right. So yeah, to the degree that you love to lift and I love to do yoga, yeah. like I have learned that like, go together. I yeah, yes. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, well, yeah, and they all, so they all are, pri we're working on pri these primal movement centers. Someone asked me the other day what functional fitness was, um, and functional fitness, it's like when you work on these primal movements that we do every day, and it just so happens, like in the weightlifting world, if you just think about squatting or hinging or pushing or pulling or carrying, like those are all functional things that we do, so we practice them body weight and we practice them under load, and then yoga also practices the same thing. Uh, maybe it doesn't get as much pulling in there, but there's a lot of primalness to it. It's been around for a long time. So um, I'm excited. And I want to, um, so for everyone listening right now, we're going to do a 10-minute wake up the joints morning routine with Sophie. And Sophie's been doing this for a really long time, one of the most amazing instructors. So I'm excited to, to do it too. And I'm going to do the best I can, seven months pregnant. Um, I'm going to roll with it. So let's do this. <laughs> okay, that's good. So thank you all. Thank you all for being here. We're going to start on our backs. Okay, so okay. if you can find your way um, to the ground, hopefully you have a spot here, and you're going to stretch out uh, nice and long, right? Just coming into a full body stretch. Talk about yeah. morning routine, that you want that big morning stretch, right? <laughs> And as you stretch up overhead, take a deep inhale. And with an open mouth exhale, you're gonna pull your knees up around your rib cage. Right? So you sort of deflate the belly. You're gonna do that again. So inhale, reach the arms up overhead, find that big morning stretch, and then open mouth exhale as you pull your knees in towards your and stay here for a moment. Take your palms to the outs or the inside of your knees. Press the knees wide apart. And let your shoulders rest on the ground. And I'm going to invite you to begin to circle out your ankles. Work to go for like these slow, big circles. And notice your ability to move both ankles, both feet in the same direction. Observe if there is any challenge with that. And then go in the opposite direction. So I'm going in and out, big circles. Let's do one more circle. And then you're going to kick everything up towards the sky, including your arms. I call it weightless pose. Put a little bend into your knees. And if you'd like to spread the toes wide and spread the fingers wide, take a breath in here. 
And with an exhale breath, we're going to slowly float the feet back down. So the soles of the feet are going to come to the ground. Keep your arms in the air and just start to close the hands, the fingers in, make a fist, and start to roll out your wrists. And go slow as you pull the knuckles really down towards your forearms. Just awaken some energy there in your forearms. Go in both directions. And then you're going to bring your feet wide. You're going to knock your knees together. Make any adjustments in your low back and bring one hand to your low belly and one hand to your heart. And join me in closing off the eyes for a moment. So the breath is one of your greatest tools. It's a communicator. It is the tool that communicates to your nervous system. You're going to take a deep breath into your belly and then see if you can stretch it up into your chest. And if it speaks to you, you can make an audible open mouth exhale. So ha. And do that two more times. Breathe into your belly, your chest, and then a big open mouth exhale, breathe out. And you have one more. Inhale, belly, chest. And take a moment to feel the natural pulse of your breath. Feel how as you inhale, there's this natural expansion that happens. And as you exhale, you move towards center. I call it the core of your being. Let the attention of your mind be with your breath for two more rounds, just like that natural expansion of the inhale. And that moving inward towards the core of your being as you breathe out. The only thing that's going to change here is you are going to change the leg position. You're going to bring the soles of your feet together. The knees are going to fall open nice and wide. Begin to awaken into your hips. Okay, so it's this butterfly position. Let the knees fall heavy towards the ground. And if you'd like to press your palms onto your thighs, you can press your palms onto your thighs. And you're here with your, with your natural breath for two rounds. Observing the natural rise of the breath in, that moving inward of the breath out. On your own time, you're gonna expand your arms out to the side. Okay? We're gonna draw the knees together. Pull the knees back into the chest, and we're going to come into a gentle twist. So you're going to pull the knees over to the left. And join me, I call it close the door. Right palm's going to go into your left palm. And with your breath, you're going to peel your right arm back open and exaggerate, really stretching the right arm over to the opposite side of your room. And if you can lift up the right shoulder blade, you're going to take a deep breath in. Imagine somebody's pulling your right fingertips away from you and drawing your left knees, your knees to the left more. And try that one more time. So lift up the right shoulder blade, breathe in, stretch to the right fingertips, knees further to the left. And then you're going to come back to center. We'll take it to the opposite side. So knees go all the way to the right. Close the door. Left palm into the right to your sideline. And with your inhale breath, peel the left arm up and open. You're going to lift your left shoulder blade off the ground. Really exaggerate. Lift and stretch through the left fingertips. Pull your knees to the right. Okay, you have one more just like that. Inhale, stretch through the left fingertips. So with the shoulder blade lifting, we get a little bit more there into the inside of the shoulder joint, chest muscle, the connection of the chest there into the shoulder. Come back to center, okay? And however you want to get there, you're going to find your way to seated, okay? seated position. And then slowly find your way to a tabletop position. Okay, I know it's a big transition. 
I'm working with 10 minutes here. Okay, so from your tabletop position, take your right leg out to the side. Okay, and if you can align your big right toe with your left knee. So if I was going to draw a line, those, those would be your, your kinetic checkpoints, right? Left knee, big right toe. Okay? And if you can glue the knife edge of your right foot down, glue the knife edge of your right foot down, press down through your left palm, align shoulder joint with wrist joint, and then reach your right arm high. Be twisting open. We're gonna cactus your right elbow back. Pull your elbow back like you're gonna like pull it into like a pocket. And then extend your fingertips back behind you, big opening for the shoulder. And if you can, push your hips back, Sweep your right arm forward like you're moving through water. You're going to reach forward, and you're going to do that one more time. Slow. Push through your left palm. Cactus. Reach back. Shift your hips back. And see if you can stay here. So we're going to open up the adductors, the inner leg line. Get a little bit of energy there into the hips. I'm sitting back on my left heel. If you can bring your forehead down, you can stack the fists on top of one another. If not, it's okay to stay here. We're just here for a full breath in and a full breath out. Follow your breath in. We're gonna come back to the tabletop position. You're gonna pull your right knee in to meet your left and we switch sides. Big left toe in line with your right knee. Shoulder joint of the right, right shoulder joint over the right wrist. Peel your left arm up and open. Take a deep breath in. There's that nice opening there for your upper middle spine. Cactus your left elbow back and start to reach back behind you. You can look back. It's like you're swimming, almost like you're back stroking, right? Pull the hips back. Sweep forward. Go slow. So we get into that inner leg line. And we'll do that one more time. Inhale, reach up. Cactus. Reach your left fingertips back. And then slowly shift back so we get a little deeper into the inner leg. Right? The abductors. Get some movement there. You can stay lifted again. Maybe you want to come a little closer. Forehead to your fists. Full breath in. Full breath out. And then slowly find your way back to your tabletop position. And shift the hips back for child's pose. Right? Forehead to earth. Palms down. And great for the low back here and for the hips. We have one more little exercise here before we bring this to a close here. On your next breath in, slowly rise back to your tabletop. And however you want to get there, you can take it into a downward facing dog or you can simply step forward. We're going to find our way to a forward fold. Okay. Bend your knees deeply. And then slowly rise up to standing. Okay, I know I'm going to come out of probably zoom view here. There you go. And then take an inhale. Reach your arms up. It is a morning routine here. So important to stand up. Take a full breath in. Reach up. Take an open mouth exhale. Release your palms down. Now I want you to pretend like you're holding a ball, like a tennis ball. Okay? With your right hand, you're going to inhale. Peel your right arm back. I'm going to give you a side view. As you exhale, you're going to pull your right arm all the way back until you can't pull it back anymore. See if you can flip your palm up and then slowly rotate back down. And then you do the opposite side. Again, pretend you have a, you're squeezing the ball. Inhale, peel up and open, right? Just to get some movement into that shoulder joint. Reach all the way back until you can't reach anymore. Flip the palm. Come all the way down. Then join me in a giant inhale, rise up, take a full breath in. Bend your knees deeply as you exhale, hinge from your hips and forward fold. At the bottom, a little halfway lift, you can bend your knees. And as you exhale, forward fold. Final rise to standing, use your inhale, rise up, take a full breath in. And with your exhale breath, hands down to your side. Okay, we'll come back down to the ground, rise up, use the breath, reach up. And if you can, you have the space, take your arms out to the side like you're pushing away. Open your chest, forward fold. 
If you have the ability here to come up for a halfway lift, we're gonna do a little tuck squat and curl. We bring that flexion into the spine and what that looks like here, I'm gonna adjust my screen, is big toes can come together and all you do is tuck, squat and curl, you round in, there's that push. Breathe into the vertebrae there in um, the upper middle of the spine. You have one more full breath in. And simple transition, knees come down to the ground. There we go. You can sweep up, take one more breath in. Always good to end with an open mouth exhale. I think that's all we have time for. Yes. Oh, that was great. That was beautiful, actually. And we can end with the, I love how the lady with cosmic yoga ends. And now we're going to end with the secret code word. It's namaste. <laughs> <laughs> it was really cute. I love the secret code word. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, um, yeah, namaste to all. Thank you for What does namaste mean? It means, um, you know, it's used as a way to say, um, like to salute and to say uh, thank you. Um, it means, nama means to adore, thank you, right? Um, often you hear, it means like the light in me honors the light in you, right? Mm. Which is a beautiful thing. I don't think that's a bad thing, you know? Not at all. Not <laughs> at all. Uh, yeah. That was awesome. Thank you. And so, so those, those, those arm extensions that we did, so that's called Surya Namaskar, and Surya means sun, and Namaskar, together, those two things mean to literally honor the light. It's a way that the yogis, it was a morning routine that they did to honor the gift of the sun every day, to honor a new day, and, um, and it literally like, is a way to move your whole body and to say thank you for giving me another day. I'm going to honor this body through these movement patterns. Isn't that cool? Yeah, yeah I like that. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, so that is, that was perfect. It was a perfect amount of time. And what we always tell people is, well, I know a lot of the classes you teach uh, at Resilience are, um, you know, run about 45 minutes to an hour, sometimes more. But when at home right now, when people aren't able to break away or get to a class or maybe even attend one of the classes, like being able to just give yourself 10 minutes of waking up the joints in the morning is super therapeutic. So doing like a flow like that, uh, simple techniques to, I mean, we got from, in my PT brain, we were doing hip flexion, you know, deep hip flexion that we don't get when we sit in a chair. We were getting ankle range of motion, which, you know, we'll get when we walk, but um, not the circular motion. Um, we got arm like full 180 or yeah, full 180, full 360 degree uh, arm circle rotation, which we don't take our arms through on a daily basis, especially if we're just working here or moving from horizontal to down. We got um, spinal flexion in there. Um, we got thoracic rotation and hip rotation, which is, I know for myself and for you, Sophie, and for others, like it's super therapeutic especially to keep, take pressure off the neck and the lower back. So all of those things were, I, I already feel, I haven't, had, I haven't had any coffee today. I've just been outside, but it's been nice. I already feel better. So Yeah, yeah it's, um, it's amazing. Most of my classes start that way. Like all of my classes start with like that, you know, we call it integration. I call it integration. We call it integration. Um, and it's amazing. Like we don't really start moving into like 20, 25 minutes into class. And it's pretty phenomenal how um, you just, you know, it's, it's, we, my roommate and I say like, it's, it's alchemy, you know, the, the joint, like that movement into the joint, that synovial fluid, the oxygen just start, starts pulling through and you're like, okay, I'm up, I'm good. I feel a little bit more, yeah. a little bit more vital. Yes. It's uh, well, exactly. Motion is lotion to the joints. And like, and actually, in um, and anyone who has questions, so I was going to say, anyone on the Zoom webinar, there's um, a chat box. Feel free to uh, ask any questions there. We'll answer them. And then, um, hello, everyone. We've got Chris, Deb. We've got Irina. We've got Jessica, Jim, Karen Wagner, 
uh, Kathleen, we've got Landon, um, Megan, Melanie, Suzanne, Terry, Terry, Ty, welcome, Warren. Um, Dr. Megan, who's on, she's one of our amazing PTs too. Uh, so welcome everyone. If you have any questions, there's a little chat box. You can ask them. And then I'm looking on Facebook. We've got my uncle responding. Saying, oh, nice. More power to you, ladies. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. Uh, so what, can you just tell us, I guess, I have a question for you, the practice. So um, for me, the waking up the joints in the morning, like I can do a little bit of a flow uh, with some of the yoga I know. And then uh, the breath is really important. Like you mentioned, the it's kind of the connection between brain and body. Um, and I do, I like using like balls to mobilize my spine and any, get in any hot spots and my tissue. But what have you felt in your body with being really consistent with the yoga practice? Like, as I know that, you know, you've sustained injuries, but like people I've found, especially in the PT side, when people come to me with injuries, they do self-care when it's convenient. Right. And like yoga is very much a form of self-care and down-regulation. And you can get upregulated doing yoga clearly, uh, meaning stimulated. But what have you found to be the most benefit to the consistency in your practice, being consistent in your practice? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. So it's, you know, this, the practice of yoga is a tradition for the mind. Like that, the, the idea is that we utilize the breath and these postures to organize the body so that we can develop better attention. And so what has been most consistent to me is when you, when you approach it from that lens, it allows you to begin to pay more attention to the signals and the messages that your body is giving you. So oftentimes there's a little bit of a conflict be between what my body is telling me versus what I want. And if I, the more I pay attention to like, yeah, I love moving this way. You know, I love moving, like it being hard and maybe a little bit more challenging and super flowy. But what my body, but what I'm really getting, the signals I'm really getting, if I really, if I take a moment to just close my eyes and connect to my body, my body's telling me like, I need more of a parasympathetic practice. I need longer holds. I need to get out of like deep flexion you know, in my quads, and I need to get into more lengthening and opening. Yeah. So what has been most consistent is slowing down and listening, you know, paying attention to the breath as a means to develop yeah. stronger attention and focus. And when you yeah. can utilize the practice as a means to, uh, to use more, as a means to develop more attention and focus, the, com the dialogue is very, very different and the hope is that you learn to pay attention to what is being fed, like what is being communicated versus like, but I want to do that, you know, because here's right. the thing, even in yoga, repetitive movement eventually leads to like, um, like the tissue becomes harder, right? Our musculature becomes a little bit harder, which then puts uh, more pressure in the joints. And then that's how I found my way to you is eventually, mm -hmm. you know, I got a little tear in a back muscle, you know, and I was in spasmodic pain and that wasn't fun. So, um, and I think back on that injury and, and that was like a long time coming. I'm like, yeah, my body was giving me very, like very strong signals and I just kept pushing and I was not listening. So breath and attention. Long yeah. Time. I like, I like that. I, without even, uh, so not even having studied yoga too much, but just having like learned a lot from you, uh, and from, attending mosaic or resilience <clears throat> and just knowing it as a very therapeutic practice that's often prescribed um, like when we just thinking of principles of tissue healing and thinking of principles of what I tell patients and individuals who are injured or just experiencing emotional or, or physical pain is like where in your life can you slow down and get more connected like if we can actually all of the, the musculoskeletal, so to speak, issues that we see pop up in the workplace, in the military, in the daily life. It's like a lot of these can be prevented through 
just getting people to connect with their body. So for example, like sitting for hours on end clearly doesn't feel good for anyone, but we get caught in it. And then that becomes like our new normal. And it's like, but if we were actually to like stay connected with our body and be aware, we, our body would signal us to get up. And so you can't just, you know, it's not just going to happen overnight. Um, but our body is designed to move. It's not designed to sit and be sedentary. It's not designed to be standing all day either in one set in one position. It's designed to just continue to move. So like a yoga practice uh, is I can imagine and what you've said and what I've experienced is a way to slow down and get connected. Um, and while you, and it, it does put you in such uncomfortable positions which is really good. And in life, it's like, well, you're in uncomfortable positions a lot. And what do you do in those? You want to get out quickly. But in yoga, you have to sit there in it and be in it, which then, you know, like you mentioned, creates those different synapses, changes the synapse in your brain, a pattern interrupt of, oh, I totally got this. Like, I can do this. I've been super proud of myself doing, because yoga is tough for me and like being able to do it and get in those uncomfortable positions that I was like, I never thought I could do that. Right. Carries over into my life then too. Yeah. And with being right, seven months pregnant, it's a whole different experience, <laughs> right? Of, like, so not, not that I've experienced it personally, but I've witnessed a lot of women, women in our community go through that experience. And it's, it's such a journey, you know, and I, I, I have, I did a, an awesome training with a, a woman, a mindful, it was a mindful mothering, um, training so prenatal and postnatal mm -hmm. and you know to help us experience those of us who haven't experienced we had you know um balloons in our bellies and yeah you have to move very you have to move very differently and you said something um dr Olson, that i think is uh really important especially during this time where we're all like readapting and redefining and even i like i find myself sitting a lot more and yeah. Um, we need like, like the law of balance and harmony, like to find harmonious expression in our physical form. You're mm -hmm. right. Like we're not, we're not like this. So one of our teachers, we joke all the time, like there's all these like counter poses for life, you know, so doing things that take that's you been. in the opposite direction. Right. Yeah. And then, you know, not to mention all the, you know, all the science that's coming out behind like the fascia and you know how it's like this memory foam and it's phenomenal mm -hmm. the body's like oh you're like this all the time let's keep you like this all the time you know yes and if you don't show it opposite yeah no totally and that's that's uh you are the positions your body becomes the positions it holds the most so and then there is a we've got a couple comments at our questions too that i want to get to um but you know like the the ability you know, just getting yourself into a little bit more thoracic extension where we were doing all the rotation helps the mood. You know, there's been research around, Amy Cuddy has done some research around how posture improves, like power posture, right? Yeah. Extension, standing strong. But I find when I get really, if I'm sad or angry, like I close down and I just have to remember to stand tall. And where does that come from? My thoracic spine, what practice can teach me that is yoga. Um, so, but anyway, we have a, so Ty asked, so where can we get more information or videos that we can use to get started? So Sophie, where can people find you to, to follow your classes? Yeah. So a couple of things, um, I'm teaching live via resilience, golden Hill, um, pretty much like five to six days a week. Uh, like today I have a class at noon. That's like a, a vinyasa yin combination. Um, but Resilience, if you go to Resilience Golden Hill, um, we have on-demand on classes, and we, if you have a library of resources, we have um, like, you know, 20 minute, 20 minute classes, uh, mm -hmm. 30 minute classes, 45 minute classes. I have a couple classes on there. Um, I'm personally working on adapting my whole life to this digital platform, but mm -hmm. I love this stuff and I'm here to serve. So, you know, reach out to me personally. I'm Soph underscore A and I'm sure I can share my, my email. Yeah. Um, but I highly recommend checking out uh, Resilience's on-demand platform because there's a lot of resources on there um, that touches upon, you know, like a restorative practice or if you need something to build a little bit more heat, 
There's so many things on there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. So we'll be able to add that to our blog too. Um, to make sure that anyone who's watching later on can have access and know where to go. Um, and then we'll also have you on again, Sophie. Yeah. Um, the other question we have is from Landon, um, is what was the biggest benefit yoga's had in your life? <laughs> I feel like I've gotten more life. Like, my whole life, I felt like life was always so fleeting. You know, it's like, oh God, the moment's gone. I'm never going to get that moment again. And what yoga has given me is the ability to be with, like presence, like present in essence, you know? So like the present moment come together to form this, this idea of essence. And it's the moment where you're like out on a walk and you see a beautiful flower or you notice a tree or you notice this child who's like delighting in the moment. And you just pause and you're like, God, I, I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful, right? So I, that's what I would say is yoga has given me more life. Yeah, that's awesome. More alive. And Great question, uh, Yeah, I was going to say that one of the distinctions that comes up for me with um, the practice of yoga, the practice of anything that forces you to be, especially kind of go to those uncomfortable places and stretch and stay connected is... Um, it brings to mind that someday versus now, right? Like instead of focusing on the someday and missing all the things in front of us, it's like life actually is right now. Like what's going on right here is all we have, right? Like the someday doesn't exist. And when that, like that's hit me, I, I, I think I learned that distinction a few years ago, but when I actually I'm constantly, I have it up on like a chalkboard in our house. <laughs> Um, so whenever I look at it, I'm like, yeah, like right now is, is what we have. And so how are we connecting in that right now? And, um, I practice is like, yeah, I get so excited. Yeah. yeah. It's just, that really is hit me because I've always been someone who's like, go, go, go. And, um, and I would say that's one of the blessings of this pandemic is that it's once again, helped me look at the life is now with my little one in my pregnancy and not someday. And it's, you know, instead of chasing down what's next, it's like what's happening right now. <clears throat> yeah. And in yoga, so. we call that Santosha. It's the practice of, um, it's a practice, it's a practice of like, can I be content with what is right now? And if, if yeah. you don't like what, like, it also says like, you don't have to like the moment. So to your point is like the life is right now. Sometimes a life of right now is like, yeah, it's not your favorite moment. But your ability to be with it, that's right. That's the like magic, right? Of life yeah. is like this. And we, because we know that that now shifts in an instant, you know what I yeah. mean? And so yeah. I couldn't agree more with you is that um, how much time we spend thinking about life being out there. Yeah. What about this moment? And the more that we, right now, the moment, yeah, the, I think the, the more, the more nectar we get out of life. Yes. I like that nectar. <laughs> well, I uh, thank you so much, Sophie. I and anyone else, um, feel free to. We're gonna end this here in a second. Um, we will make sure to add all of uh, Sophie's information in the show notes here, and make sure it's in the blog. But if you have any questions after today, um, we this will this is on Facebook too, so you can ask questions on our Facebook page. Uh, make sure to check out Resilience. I think it's at Resilience Golden Yellows on, on Instagram. Um, and then um, say the, what is the, what's our Facebook page, Sophie? Uh, for um, Resilience? Yeah. Um, it is Resilience 10. Resilience 10. Okay, cool. So that's on Facebook. Become more resilient. Um, I see here that Jim asked a question, Jim Reyes, about his meniscus. Oh, on uh, Facebook? I see it on Zoom. Um, no surgery. How long is a normal recovery, and can I get back to 100%? It's a great question for you. Yes. Um, so, actually, I don't even see that question. Can you say he that said, again? Uh, he said, I tore my meniscus on the inside of my right knee nine weeks ago. Okay. 
He's 80% back, no surgery. How long is normal recovery and can I get back to uh, 100%? Uh, with the torn meniscus, um, it's, you have a bit of a new normal now. Um, the meniscus, part of it can heal depending on where the vascular, so the more vascular the area is, the meniscus can heal a little bit. And I think that's more of the um, medial aspect of the meniscus. Uh, you, in a lot of cases, so the research does show that um, no surgery on a meniscus is the most, the best way to go versus getting um, a meniscectomy. Uh, well, the meniscectomy is probably the best surgery to get versus um, actually getting an, like a new meniscus in there, a fake meniscus, so to speak. So, but the research does show like conservative care um, without surgery is the, one of the best methods. And the key is, is to find out. So it's been 12 weeks, right? Nine, 12 weeks. Um, so, um, yeah, so it's been a little bit and then you're definitely out of, let's say the acute phase, which is the first two weeks of after an injury. Um, the thing that you want to think about is like, how did it, we would want to know how it happened in the first place. Like usually the knee is a stability joint. Well, not usually the knee is a stability joint. So if you're missing hip rotation, if you're missing ankle mobility, range of motion, um, if you're lacking stability in the knee, which now you definitely are with the meniscus tear, what are you doing to take care of those things? So not only the knee, but the above and below joints. And those are things that we'd want to tackle, Jim. So to get back to 100%, yeah, you can get back to feeling pretty darn good and actually being pain-free. Um, however, there is a reason it happened in the first place. So we would want you, we would want to figure out what actually caused it, if that makes sense. So it's not exactly an easy answer. And the body will heal on its own. However, if you don't fix the cause of how it happened, it will keep manifesting itself. And so... With that being said, you know, we do, even though right now in the pandemic, Movement Rx does telehealth appointments and virtual appointments. And we, if you're in San Diego, we do in-person appointments. So I would suggest getting a movement specialist to look at like what's going on with you and then see from there um, what the cause is. Dr. And to put you in the right direction. Would you say that was similar to like, you can use me as an example, like when I came and saw you, I had like super overactive traps, so I had weak lower trap muscles. Yeah, exactly. So it's like, you know, your your neck, yeah. So Sylvia was dealing with some neck issues and some shoulder issues, like, and yes, yeah, she could get back to 100%. Um, there's no tear there, right? You have a tear, Jim, so that's a little bit different. But you can still feel really darn good and do most things you used to do. It's just, again, you have to t identify the cause. And with Sophie, it was like, yeah, you could continue to do yoga. You could rest for 12 weeks, you know, even like four weeks and get back to doing yoga. But it's going to pop up again, right, with the amount that she loves yoga and does it consistently. So we had to figure out the cause of why she was having overactive traps, which was affecting her neck and her shoulder. And just in a couple of sessions, like we were able to get her on track to, to fire those lower traps and give her things that were sustainable for her. And like the whole point with Movement RX isn't to, it's not a traditional PT clinic where we're there, we're seeing you three times a week for six weeks. It's like, we want to give you tools and knowledge right away to start helping yourself heal. That's so. why I love you guys. I always say that. I'm like, they're not traditional. <laughs> it's empowering. I would say you guys have an empowering approach. So Thank um, you. I, I highly, yeah. I, and a lot of the work that we did was breath focused. A lot of like what helped me reset. Yeah. Was I was mind, mind blown. I was like, wow, this body is Yes. <laughs> Breath is huge. And it's a big part of what we assess on an athlete. Um, so thank you, Jim, for the question. And if anyone else, so we are saving the video. It'll be on Facebook, but it'll also be on our platform as a blog and on with our member area. Those who are on our, some of our online programs, they will have access to it too, to include all the questions that come up here. So um, I think that's it. This was a very popular session and we crushed, you crushed it, Sophie. So yeah. awesome. Thank you. It was an honor. Thank you. I love this. I love you guys. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you everyone for sticking on and Sophie, thank you.
You're amazing. You're like a sister from another mother. And um, I look forward, we look forward to having you on again. Sounds and good. everyone, do this morning routine for the next, I like, like my homework for you is do it for the next two weeks. Do 10 it. 10 minutes. See how you feel. We call it homework. 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 <laughs> I love it. Okay. Okay. Thank Bye, you. Sophie. Bye. Thank you. Take good care. Bye, everyone.